Stephen, do you have a question, bro? Uh, uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw you like what two days ago. Uh, oh, a lot's happened since then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this has happened a couple times with me now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, patient with restricted HGIR bilaterally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we're going through the exercise, it looks like they're able to maintain a ZOA, you know, no, you know, the rib and the ribs and lower ribs and abdomen are flush. When they breathe in, you know, you can see the upper rib cage expand, awesome. but no change in IR. Mm -hmm. What am I missing? Is there something else? What do you, what do you got in the lowers? Uh, for this patient in particular, she was, uh, patho PEC on both sides of her hips. Okay. What about IRs and stuff? And uh, uh, you know, IR, ER, you know, she had plenty of IR, you know, maybe 40 degrees on each side. Oh, a lot, huh? Um, mm -hmm. e ER, you know, maybe a little less 35 or so. Okay. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, you know, from just viewing the exercise, I'm like, no, she's got it. But then, you know, I, I retest and like, you know, obviously something was off. Yeah. I mean, very difficult for me to offer you anything, but okay. Can yeah. I tell you about what happened today to me? Uh, absolutely. That might help. Sure. Okay. So we had, we had a, a baseball player and a uh, um, uh, college baseball player. Um, and, uh, everything was looking really good. Like he walked in the door and, and, uh, full variability of his pelvis walking in the door with, with but no internal rotation on either shoulder and no horizontal. And, um, so I'm thinking, oh, and no, no hip abduction, uh, in lowers actually. So not full variability, but sagittal, he had sagittal. And, uh, um, you know, went, went through the typical processes and, and he's not changing at all. Right. I mean, nothing is changing. Mm -hmm. So I do some, uh, uh, rib cage work and he's got this great expansion, right? So everything looks like everything should just be perfect mm -hmm. today. And it's it's just not happening and it, it, it was really confounding for a while it took about 20 minutes of, of, of work to, to kind of figure this thing out and and uh, turns out that uh, and, and this is this is based on my intent I can't tell you I I'm, my x-ray vision is not very good so I couldn't actually see a spine right but it, it turns out that, it, that what it appears to be is that he was extended way up okay so so we're talking like a, a mid to upper thoracic um, spinal extension causing a lot of reorientation of, of the shoulder girdle position and blocking the IRs. And so what we ended up doing was doing a bilateral uh, hip ER activity with upper extremity ER while maintaining a posterior rotation of the ilium. So you might look at that as, as like a synchronized glute max activity. Yeah. That makes sense yeah. when I say that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, um, um, and as soon as we did that, everything dropped and everything went back to normal. It, it, so, so one of the things that, that you, you kind of have to understand is, is that the, uh, the, these extension patterns that occur higher up away from the pelvis really do influence everything on down. And when you get somebody with like crazy internal rotation of their hips, like right off the bat yeah. and you go, Oh, this is good. Not so much. <laughs> no, I don't want to always suck. Because a lot of times, a lot of times what you're looking at is an orientation of the pelvis, an orientation of the pelvis in a, in a, in a, in a anteriorly rotated position, which, which puts the acetabulum in such a position that you get this crazy internal rotation, right? You might even have, what appears to be normal adduction, yeah, right? that, that, but you're actually, adducting them, you're actually adducting them in a position of flexion. And so, so all of your tests suddenly look clean, right? Yep. And that's what we had today. Mm -hmm. 
And like I said, exactly. everything looked so good, and 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 he felt good, which which is another confounding thing, that uh, um, you know you you would expect to see a, a, a much bigger change. Now he had some nice small changes across the board, but but as soon as we um, addressed the the extension that was much more above the pelvis, that's boom. I mean, just like he melted, and um, and he could tell the difference too. So. One of the things that I would I would I would say is kind of look in that respect is to look just further up as far as where you're you're making your uh, determination as to to what orientation you're seeing right and, and sometimes it's not you know all clear and 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 uh, picture perfect I don't know if that helps a little bit but but uh, it. it yeah, it, when, when you say extension higher up, mm -hmm. I, I guess how it, how do you how do you determine kind of where you know when you say ex, you know kind of mid thoracic extension or uh, what tests or, or what are you looking at to determine well, that? So, like, so if you see like a, a limitation in what you you have an apparent no limitation in in the expansion of the upper thorax during yep. breathing. Yep. Right but you still see the IR deficits and you still see the horizontal deficits. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's going on there, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, imagine bringing the scaps closer and closer together on the backside of the body. And then what would that do to the uh, orientation of the glenoid? And then how would that affect shoulder motion? And then how would it affect the lengths of the soft tissues? Right? So, so again, this guy walks in with bilateral shoulder limitations, but apparently you know, clean elsewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and I just found that hard to believe. And like I said, it was a little confounding at first. And then, but once we got the, uh, um, uh, the management of the thorax uh, to clean up, then uh, everything was fine. And, and, and we had a little bit more of a, I mean, like even as hip measures changed when we didn't even have to address that really all that much. So it sounds like, you know, the initial, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like you're saying the, the patient's scapular were maybe more retracted than we would expect to see. Yes, sir. Um, I guess then what led you to like the synchronized glute max activity? Cause that they're actively ERing their, their shoulder with, with that exercise. Right. And that would further drive retraction. No, it wouldn't. No, no, it wouldn't, young man. Why would I let him do that? That's that's what I'm asking. Well, okay. So <laughs> if 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 I let him do what he wanted, absolutely it would, right? But mm -hmm. the idea is to get him to externally rotate without retracting. Okay. So there's an element of coaching here, right? Sure. Okay. So, so what? I guess what? What's kind of your the thought process at, at why that synchronized glute activity worked well for, for that particular patient. Okay. So, so I have, I have a, a pelvis that is oriented in an anterior rotation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so if, if, if I was oriented in an anterior rotation, would, would your, uh, um, outlets be abducted or adducted? <laughs> Say out of So it's just orientation, right? That, yeah. Okay. It's just oriented forward. Mm -hmm. So the outlets would still be open. Yeah. So now I can afford to actually bilaterally ER. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I got I got adductors on both sides that were on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have no internal rotation, which means that he was his pelvis was oriented so far forward that he internally rotated. So there's no more internal rotation to go. And I had adductors that had stayed on. So wouldn't it behoove me to reverse the position of the pelvis, ER both of those femurs, mm -hmm. right? Inhibit my adductors, mm -hmm. close the outlets to a certain degree, right? And then I keep the thorax expanded while he externally rotates both shoulders without retracting. Right? So now he's got control of the thorax. So he's not extending his thorax as he tries to retract. Does that make sense? 
I guess how how do you explain the the change in in uh, upper, upper extremity measures and just the fact that he has control of he expanded axis. his thorax anteriorly and posteriorly, mm -hmm. right? Without retracting the scapula. Okay. So now I have a thorax for the scap to rest on. So now instead of having a uh, um, a, 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 a orientation of the scapula that would actually block um, my uh, rotation and limit my horizontal abduction, I, I have a, a normal resting position of the scapula on the thorax because I've expanded the thorax anteriorly and posteriorly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But but like a, a protraction activity wasn't giving him that like no because we've already tried that or, yeah we've already gone that direction yeah in fact I did two of them and then we did manual work mm -hmm. on the rib cage and again everything looked great mm -hmm. right I even had him off his back and so we you know we we gave him that opportunity to and and he can do it he can do mm -hmm. it but you know it just didn't go okay so. So again, I'm, I'm rationalizing my, my intent. And mm -hmm. then I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm confirming myself with the outcome. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so you have to give me that, that little bit of leeway, right? Uh, so so w with the retraction limiting horizontal abduction, is that simply because the pec is becoming elongated already in that position? Yes, sir. That would be, that would be my, that would be my thought process. Yes. And so with all the left pec inhibition activities that PRI typically does, I guess my thought would be the pecs already stretched. Why are we doing more? Why are we breathing in, in these positions while stretching the pec even further? If that could be our limiter in horizontal abduction. Sure. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. Do, do you do? Have do I ever done them? Or, it, you know, it, it, is that, you know, is that a rational way of, of, of thinking in regards to maybe the pecs are already too long in that right BC pattern? We actually need to... Why do you think that... Okay. I, see, I don't necessarily agree that there are always inhibition activities for the targeted... Just because they're called something, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't necessarily agree that that would be what you're actually inhibiting. Right, mm -hmm. you got a rib cage involved there. That that's a pretty big influence. You've got a scapular position that's a pretty big influence. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily agree that they're always inhibition activities. Okay, it, you're, you're you're altering position. W would you say the left pec is typically already eccentrically oriented in a right BC pattern, or no? Depends. <laughs> I mean, yes and no. I mean, I can give you, I can give you, and you know as well as I do that you could have scenarios of both, right? Hmm. I, would, I guess I'm just thinking typical, you know, sternum oriented to the right, mm -hmm. left, left scapular retraction, like it seems like, you know, the two attachments. Under that scenario, I would think that it would be in a lengthened position already, yes. Movement part, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you. Cool. Look at that depth. We don't normally go that deep, do we? <laughs> um, Patrick had asked for clarification on the exercise. It, it was supine with the posterior pelvic rotation and the knees fall out and fall in. They don't fall out, you push them out. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, no, you have to actively, because oh, you're trying to inhibit adduction. Okay, do you have a, did you put a band around his knees? I did. Okay. Okay. This makes sense. So they, they definitely don't fall out. <laughs> no. What's um, the significance with, uh, like, that's, that's one thing I guess I'm a little confused on. Like, when you ex, which movement you pattern with the exhale and which you pattern with the inhale? Um, so it, uh, there's a natural external rotation associated with inhalation and a natural uh, uh, internal rotation with exhalation. So you, you, that's what you want to synchronize. Internal so breathe rotation. In ER, breathe out internal rotation okay. Got it. How about with um, 
I know that was one where um, I don't. It was a ninety ninety breathing technique. To I think it was to posture to rotate the pelvis. I saw a video. Is it you inhale with knee ex with uh, knee extension and exhale with knee flexion? I guess my explanation might not be the best. Are you doing like an alternating activity? Yes. Okay, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, it's it's knee extension in inhale, knee flexion, exhale. And is that the same uh, reasoning behind? What's the reasoning behind that then? Because you're, you're you're trying to do this. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you inhale, the ilium rotates forward, right? Mm -hmm. So as you extend the knee, rec fem pulls on the pelvis and it pulls it forward in a forward rotation. Mm -hmm. So you want to synchronize that rotation of the ilium with, with inhalation. Does that help? Yeah, got it. That makes sense. Yeah. So inhalation is coupled with an anterior rotation of the pelvis and external no, rotation. No, 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 no. Let me stop you, okay? Because yeah. I want you to get this right. It's the rotation of the ilium. Rotation of the ilium. Not the pelvis. Got it. Okay, there's a difference. Because the sacrum and the, and the ilium can move in opposite directions. Yeah. It's not one big piece that always goes together. They work in opposition, and that's a huge, uh, uh, huge concept to understand because that that's what drives a lot of decision making and what exercises you're going to select. Got okay. Mm-hmm. Internal rotation, no. Inhalation, anterior rotation of the ilium. Think and I breathe in, it goes out. Yeah. I breathe out, it goes in. Right. And then, and then internal rotation and is. Then breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Because the sacrum goes in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. How come so, then internal rotation is combined with, uh, or inhalation is combined with external rotation and, and exhalation is combined with internal rotation? Say, say that again, I'm sorry. Uh, how, the, how come, what's the reasoning behind the external and internal rotation pattern with uh, inhalation and exhalation? Under what circumstance are we talking here, bud? Uh, yes, back to the first example, the um, supine AB so, so you breathe in and you ER? Mm -hmm. And you breathe out and you IR? Right? Mm -hmm. All right, yes, what's, like, what's the reasoning behind that? Why is it, why is it breathe in and external rotate, breathe out, internal rotate? So what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to follow the normal mechanics without um, the normal mechanics of respiration without um, losing the, uh, without driving the scapula, okay, to where I'm, I'm driving into an extension-based position, right? So I'm trying to teach you to control the internal and external rotation during respiration where so this guy was defaulting into this this like uh, a much more i hate to use the term but but i someone when it pops into my head right now he's, he's using more of an aggressive like retraction type of a position of the scapula mm -hmm. and i didn't and, and as he was breathing in um and i didn't want him to use that so i wanted to put him in that position but but restrict him from going where he was taking himself Right, got it. Because I've done all the like the forward reaching and pushing and and all that kind of stuff that you would typically do. Right, and he could and uh, honestly he could put air everywhere I wanted him to go, um, but he wasn't controlling it um, at the, in the like the upper thorax and in the scapular area as well when he was inhaling in other positions. And so as soon as we would we would put him in another position, he would lose it. And so, you know, just we, again, you have to coach this. You, you, you can't just default into and say, okay, just all I'm doing is ERing and all I'm doing is IRing. It's like there's a very specific way to, to coach people through that activity so they execute it correctly. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, so I, 
It's like, you know, you, you try to take them away from what they all think. You know, that would be your typical plan of action. You know, you, you would do that. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so I did all that stuff and it didn't help. And so I, I took him in a direction that he would want to go, but I restricted how he did it. Got it. Yeah. It's hard to do without practical examples sitting in front of you. I know it's hard to see. <laughs>